We're going to make a paste now and as you can tell we've already incorporated the powders together using the method I've shown previously. We've got our base in front of us and as a paste it's going to be fairly concentrated so there's not a great deal of base but there's quite a lot of powder. Okay. So again the method I use is I use a small amount of base and this is quite a thick base and I tend to spread that out slightly onto the slab so we've got somewhere to place the powder and it doesn't puff away or get blown away. Okay, using the clean spatula just get most of the powder off. Okay, and again try not to leave things on a dirty bench just in case you need to use it. Okay. Now, same method as before, we just need to s sort of gently scrape out. It doesn't need a lot of pressure because you've only used it lightly. Now the key to this is to do it slowly. You rush, it goes everywhere, you lose powder, you lose base. By using a mortar and pestle to incorporate the powder, you've actually helped ground down the particle size as well. And that makes it easier to incorporate into a base. So you can see we've still got some powder left in, in here, so just gonna gently scrape the sides. probably need to have a few goes at this to get all of the powder out. And again, only very light, you can hear the scraping, but only very lightly. I'm not putting any pressure against the side. Now, if I use the spatula to tap this, I'm tapping against the flat side, not the edge. That's how you'll chip it and break things. Okay, as you can see, we've not managed to get all of the powder out, but that's fine. Um, that's okay. All right, again, because it's a thick base, I'm going to use the, the larger batches that I've got. One of the benefits of putting the base down first is you can soften it up by working it into the slab, which makes it easier to incorporate. Now, as it's a paste, it's going to be very concentrated. So this step is very slow. And you'll see I'm working on a small area just gently working the powder into the paste. Okay. You can see that it's starting to puff a little bit, even with that out the sides. You may be able to see that, you may not. Got to be really careful we don't lose powder at this point. Now you can see that there's a lot of powder here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the rest of the base to give myself something to work into. Now I'm just going to soften up the base a little bit first.
you will need a bit more force than you did for the cream and that's because as a paste it's a lot thicker and the base we're using is a lot thicker as well. Keep working small amounts of powder into the paste. Now as you can tell I'm being very slow when I'm cleaning my spatulas against each other because there will still be powder that's liable to go free. And as you can see I'm wearing a white shirt and I don't want to stain it. So we've probably incorporated about three quarters of the powder so far. Okay, and you can see, you can see that it's getting brighter and brighter in terms of the base, and it's getting a bit more difficult to incorporate in. If you try and work in the centre of the slab and keep your movements nice and small, it stops it from running away on you and you're losing things off the edge, as this guy wants to just here. Now you'll see when I'm cleaning the spatulas, I'm doing it very close to the slab, aren't I? As compared with the cream, I was a bit above it. And that's because I don't want to lose any of this powder. Because there's proportionally a lot more powder to base when you're making a paste. Now as you can see we've got most of the powder incorporated, don't try to rush this next bit, okay? Make sure you've got all of the powder incorporated before you try and do anything else, okay? As you can probably tell, the base is quite thick and it's quite sticky and difficult to get off the spatula. Now remember I put some base down 
onto the slab first, we need to make sure we pick all of that base up and turn it over and make sure it's fully incorporated with the rest of the paste. So you can see we've almost, it's very, very thick. Okay. Same motions as before. You just need to be quite careful because it wants to run away with you if you slip. Okay. So you, even though it's quite a thick paste, you can still see it's smooth and consistent. Again, paste, creams, ointments, anything that you're going to apply to a skin, you need to make sure it's smooth and consistent. Okay. the same process as before, once you're happy with it, get it into a position where you can put it into a jar of an appropriate size. Now, sometimes when you've worked a cream, a base, a paste or an ointment or anything like that a lot, you put more air into it and it takes up a greater volume. Now your jars will be based on what they can, ha what they can handle, so a 50 gram jar may not necessarily be enough if you're making 50 grams of cream if you have to work it a lot. So be aware of that, so the size of the jar you put it in needs to be appropriate. Okay. And again, tidy up your slab, make sure you've got all those extra bits. Here we go. So that's how you make a paste. Using the same steps we showed you before in terms of putting your paste ointment or a cream into a jar, using the pressure around the sides, that's how you go about putting it into the jar.